My name is T. Colin Campbell, and I'm uh, have been in this business of research, especially on diet and health, for a long time. Starting with my graduate school days in the late 1950s, uh, came into the business uh, with a certain prejudice that the good old American diet was the best we could do, and all that stuff, and particularly rich in animal-based foods. But then got involved in generating a fairly large and significant research program over the years that had many dimensions. It involves people studies in Philippines and China and a couple other places, but mostly involved also laboratory work, just trying to understand some connections between food. In this particular case, initially it was between food and cancer, and more particularly between the consumption of animal protein and cancer. Uh, but it turned out just to be a load of really exciting ideas that just violated everything I had read in the textbooks of the day or in fact that I was taught or in fact that what I was teaching my students in the beginning. I finally came to believe that what this new information was for me was real. And that was around, and it was supported by the way by NIH during that entire time, so I was kind of uh, fortunate to have plenty of research funding, which meant that it got reviewed by my peers all along. And I got, got successive uh, approvals. So I, I felt comfortable, I mean, I'm, you know, it's not bad stuff, it's exciting stuff, they're approving it, I'm publishing it. And finally, uh, we did the work in China to see how does this work in a population, a big population, in the late 1980s, about 1990 or so. Uh, that was announced uh, in the New York Times, that's a China study, and I mean, it just kept growing. I, I you know, had the challenges along the way, ch either challenges in the system and my colleagues or challenged in other things in the area of policy especially, too, uh, running into, I always found myself just sort of somehow kind of disagreeing, not dis being disagreeable, but just quite frankly disagreeing from time to time over the previous 20, 30 years on various and sundry things. So then I, I, I really felt emboldened. When the Chinese study got, came to an end, I didn't know how good it was going to do. And we actually wrote in the book, by the way, that I, I, didn't, I don't like to be a preacher or a proselyzer in a sense, and so we actually wrote in there in, in a place, you don't have to believe me in all this science, just try it. Because I thought the answer would be right, would be right for them, and so, so it went. And so that, that's been fun. That, that came out in 2005 and ever since. It's just, it just keeps on expanding. Keeps on expanding. So for whatever part I played in that whole movement, for me it's been a very exciting thing. I mean, I know, I, I really am just ultimately confident that this idea of who, consuming a whole food, plant-based diet, you know, low in fat, protein and refined carbohydrates, I want to emphasize that sugars, things like that, that uh, and oil, I, I just see this is so right, absolutely so right. And what I, my experiences have taught me, and especially in the lectures that I've given since the book came out, that we're climbing a very steep hill. And I know that the reactionaries, if you will, exist all over the place. They're looking out for their interest. I understand that. Uh, if they're an industry, they're, you know, they've got jobs, they got this, they got that. I, can, I almost accept that. I know what their, what, what their motivation is. But having worked in a sort of political arena at the same time, I once naively thought that maybe I could get involved in talking to some of the folks that I had known at that level. Hey, you know, if you, if you can understand this, why don't we work something out? Very naive. No way. I mean, anybody in a reasonably senior level is either elected to their office or they've been employed by somebody who in turn is elected. So, I mean, I don't know, I was so late in coming to this view, but it was, it beat, nonetheless, it became clear to me that you don't go from the top down with this, forget it. For me, this story is personal as well as professional. I mean, especially it's personal because it involves my family. Starting out with my parents who had to suffer things they didn't have to suffer because they didn't know. It's about uh, my wife's parents too. Her mother especially paid a big price for not having the money to follow up on the diagnosis of colon cancer. 
we've got something here that will solve problems in the future on many fronts. Cost of health care, personal health, environmental issues, it all comes together. And it's an absolute tragedy. It's a simple tragedy that we've known this information for so god darn long. And, you know, somehow we've got, you know, uh, architects of the system that we have holding us back. So if I, if I were to be the Surgeon General, I sure, certainly would be a very outspoken person. There was no question about it in my mind. 